Hello, good day, and welcome to Lena Media TV Editorial. I am Victoria, broadcasting from Canada, and this is the headline. The two truces bringing you this in detail after the short break. Stay tuned. Hello, and welcome back from the short break. Now, news in detail. Few weeks ago, the three biggest wars in the world were Ukraine, Ethiopia, and Yemen. Now, truces have silenced the guns and the airstrikes in the two of the three. There are only temporary truces so far, but there is a reasonable chance that they could grow into something more permanent. The Ethiopian government declaration of humanitarian truce on 24th March came as a surprise. Six months ago, rebels advanced from their home province of Tigray, more than halfway to the country's capital, Addis Ababa, and Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed seems on the brink of defeat. The Tigrayans made an alliance with another separatist movement, the Roma Liberation Army, and were close to linking up with them physically. The survivor of Africa's second biggest country seems to be hanging by a thread and the border course of it broke up into ethnically defined successor state could have lasted for decades. But the Tigrin outrain their supplies, Abi Ahmed took delivery of some Turkish made drones and by the end of the year, the front line had moved all the way back north to Tigray border. There, the Ethiopian army stopped aware that taking the rebel province by force could involve huge casualty on both sides and had no guarantee of success. Tigray is landlocked, so an Ethiopian blockade on all food supplies from outside was the obvious option. By last month, at least 2 million of Tigray and 7 million people were suffering an extreme lack of food and practically everybody was hungry all the time. If Tigray was ever to be persuaded to stay in Ethiopia, however, the blockade had to end before huge numbers starved to death. Abiy Ahmed understood that, but still, unlikely that he would declare trance without some assurance from the Tigray leaders that they would respect it and the real negotiation would follow. The Tigrayan war has killed tens of thousands and displaced millions, but there is now a real possibility that the 16 month old war could end in negotiation peace that keeps Tigray at least formally within the Ethiopian state. That matters because a successful Tigrayan secession would probably have triggered a cascade of other breakaway movement. The boy in Yemen is much older, seven years now, and much blouder, 400,000 dead and counting. It is usually portrayed by the international media as a war between the legitimate Yemeni government and Houthi rebels with a variety of Arab monarchies and dictatorship back in the government and Iran back in the rebels. None of that. The Houthi Arab military of northern Yemeni tribes who rebelled when the Saudi-controlled regime tried to cut them out of their share of the country's limited oil revenue. Iran sympathizes because the Houthi tribes like Iran are Shia Muslims but Tehran does not and cannot support the military. The legitimate government is a former Yemeni field marshal and political court Abdurban Mansa Hadi who was installed as an interim president without an election for a two-year transitional period 11 years ago. He got the job by doing a deal with the Saudis who always want an obedient placement in power in the turbulent country to the south. Haldi was merely seeking to secure his own position when he tried to deprive the Houthis of their share of oil revenues because he is from the south himself. When they rebelled and took control of most of the country, he fled to Saudi Arabia, where he has spent the great majority of his time ever since. The Saudis and their girlfriends with Western backing have been bombing Yemen ever since, but their armies are mostly poorly motivated mercenary so they don't do well on the ground. The war has been stalemate for years and an almost complete blockade has brought most of the country's close farming. Most of those 400,000 dead are from hunger. So the two-man trance is a blessing 
although so far it only allows fuel to come into the port, not food, there is no principle at stake on either side, just quiet consideration of money and power. So in theory, they should be able to make a lasting peace deal where everybody shares the quiet limited worth. In practice, in Yemen, it's never that simple, but Western backing for Saudi Arabia has dwindled since Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman went to Raga. So otherwise, why the truth? This is where ended Victoria on Alena Media TV. I am Victoria and thanks for watching.